Hello and welcome. In our last segment, we introduced deductive reasoning. This type of reasoning is more objective than inductive reasoning because it uses factual information that has been established over time. Deductive reasoning then allows us to connect ideas or rules we trust to new ideas or to problems we'd like to solve. We make a premise or a statement like, all men are mortal. John is a man. John is mortal. As our two premises are true, we can confidently state that John will not live forever. There shouldn't be shades of gray with deductive reasoning, but we still need to be reasonable about what we are connecting. The rules we learn from math offer us some good examples of how we can apply deductive reasoning to solve problems in a logical way. The rules not only guide us to the correct result, they can also open up more efficient ways to solve problems. For example, solving a question like this is much easier when we remember there's a rule for multiplying exponents. We can simply add the exponent values if the bases are the same. So we get y to the 23rd power. We can also use good reasoning skills to confirm rules we are uncertain about. By using a simpler multiplication example like this one, and expanding the expression, we quickly confirm adding the exponents is correct. If we came across an expression like this and were instructed to simplify, we might default to multiplying the numerator together and then doing our division. But of course, we could divide first to make it much easier and get our answer much more concisely. The better we know the rules, the more confidently we will approach all kinds of problems. Sometimes the rules are in place so there's less misunderstanding when communicating ideas involving math. All languages have rules that attempt to limit their ambiguity. Like the need for order of operations rules summarized by the acronym BEDMAS. What if everybody just made up their own order for solving equations? The inconsistency would lead to various outcomes and a lot of miscommunication. This would be disastrous in places where accuracy was critical. Although it can be challenging at times, success in math is about understanding when and how to apply the rules, which is common for any language and other aspects of our lives. Solving an equation like this one is a good example. We're really applying deductive reasoning. Each step involves deciding how to apply a rule, a rule we might not have a name for but from practice, no exists. The distributive property allows us to multiply out the five. Then we can progress with pretty much any operation we want as long as we're consistent with both sides of the equal sign, so as not to change the meaning and keep both sides equal. So the addition property allows us to add three X to both sides, isolating X on the left-hand side. Subtract the constant term 10 from both sides, Use the division property to simplify to get x equals negative 2. Because our steps are sound, we can be confident that we have deduced the correct answer. Of course, we could substitute our answer into the original equation just to be sure. That would be logical. The rules we have created for math can also be applied to prove conjectures. Sometimes the proofs become some of mathematicians' greatest challenges. Or they can be quite simple, like this one. We have seen a pattern that has led us to the conjecture that the sum of two odd integers is always even. We can write the odd numbers as 2x plus 1 and 2y plus 1, because we can make the following two statements. 2 times any integer gives us an even number, and adding 1 makes an even number odd. When we add these two expressions, we get 2x plus 2y plus 2. And finally, we can see we can take out the common factor of 2. Since x, y, and 1 are all integers, they all add up to an integer. That is multiplied by 2. This takes us back to our first statement that any integer times 2 has to be even. Once a conjecture is proven, it graduates to being a fact. 
and we can stop looking for counterexamples. Well, what do you think about the rules used here to show that 2 equals 1? At first glance, we may be ready to change the way we view math, as our world just got turned on its head. It would appear no rules were broken in this proof. That would be a sign of a good attempt to defy logic. Can you spot the error? It's not obvious, but it's here. To make the step, both sides would be divided by a minus b. But in the original statement, we learned that a equals b. That means a minus b is 0. Dividing by 0 is, of course, not possible. So the equation is undefined from this point. With deductive reasoning, we make an assumption that the statements are true or that the rules are being followed. And thus the conclusion is true. It doesn't mean someone won't try to sneak one past you. One of the gifts you are granted with being a good reasoner is that you'll be better equipped to spot someone whose logic goes nowhere or disguises false statements. Here's a bit of a twist on this. With inductive reasoning, we evaluated patterns to help us predict the future. Since deductive reasoning works from things we already know, it is not forward thinking, but it still may be able to help us with making logical decisions. Think coin toss, for example. One outcome, but two possibilities. The rules of probability clearly state a 50-50 chance of heads or tails. If we want to know the chances of four tails in a row, we need to multiply the odds of each toss together, which puts the odds at 1 in 16, much lower. Let's apply this. You know a super family that has four boys. The parents debate having another child, as naturally they would like a girl. They are convinced that the next one has to be a girl. What are the odds? 50-50, of course. Although the odds of having five boys in a row is slim at 1 in 32, knowing the rules allows you to deduce that the odds of the fifth child being a girl are the same as it being a boy. But wouldn't having a girl be nice? Here are a couple more examples of how the rules of probability work and can be used. Rolling a die. One result out of six possibilities, so one in six chance you'll get it right. Odds of rolling snake eyes, two ones, one in 36. Let's take this a step further to playing cards where there may be more possibilities. For example, what are the odds of drawing a heart from a deck of 52 cards? Since there are 13 hearts, the chances are 13 of 52, so one in four. An ace? Only four aces, so four in 52, or one in 13. However, the odds change quickly, but they can be precisely calculated by applying the rules of probability, like in poker. If you're holding an ace and an ace is showing in a game like Texas Hold'em, you know there are only two aces left and the remaining 47 cards you can't see. So the chances of the next card being an ace is the exact ratio 2 and 47, just over 4%. This should impact the way the hand is viewed, as these are precise odds, regardless of the gut feeling that might suggest otherwise. So again, we are applying the rules where we can to inform us about the likelihood of an event, which may help us make a decision. But we can't influence the outcome no matter how much the couple wants a girl or the gambler wants an ace. The odds are the odds. But thinking anything else would be, well, unreasonable. We've covered a lot of territory with our exploration of reasoning. We introduced inductive reasoning as something that comes so naturally to us, we may not be aware we're using it as we explore new patterns and trends that may help us make predictions and decisions. In spite of our best efforts, however, our inductive reasoning may still lead us to draw the wrong conclusions and conjectures. 
Deductive reasoning by comparison is clearer as it uses accepted knowledge and works to connect things we already know to be true. Using deduction implies understanding the rules you've learned and using that knowledge to make new connections, solve problems, and be aware when someone is trying to bend the facts. It may also help us understand the probability of a random event, like the gender of a baby. But be clear that the rules of probability can only give us the odds of something happening and have no predictive capability. We have tried not to get too hung up on defining reasoning as we've been more focused on understanding what it is and how it can be useful. You will find the need for good reasoning everywhere and with practice your skills will continue to grow. And that should help you with your personal success, as well as with the success of our planet. And that will be a reason to celebrate.